Hello, students. This is Anne Marie Sargent, a Sargent Art. Please like and subscribe to this video. Uh, I am doing a techniques video, as promised. Since we're missing class on Wednesday, I thought I would give you something to occupy yourselves, um, as if you don't have anything else to do. Mainly, I'm giving you something to make sure you make some time for art. So um, you can follow along with this video and we'll just have some fun kind of seeing what happens with different effects that we can do with watercolor. Um, so for this exercise, you will need a straw, a Q-tip, uh, some bubble wrap if you have it, a piece of saran wrap. Um, I also have a candle, which we've used a little bit in class, but I'll show you again. Um, I have some clean water. We'll talk about that. Uh, oh, and I have uh, salt. You will need some. This is my little container of salt. So we'll need some salt also. So why don't you pause the video and collect those items and then come back. And in the meantime, I will get started. So I have spritzed my paints and... Um, I'm going to take my brush. So for most of these techniques, it will be best to have kind of dark, well, uh, not necessarily dark pigment, but um, lots of heavy paint. So it, it meaning like richer paint, less water. Uh, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some dots over here with my, this is just a white birthday candle. And what the wax does, as you know, is resist the paint application. So that's gonna be one of the techniques that we're gonna look at. So I've just put some dots down. I'm gonna come over here and to get the most contrast and bang for my buck, I'm coming into my indigo and show you what the wax resist will do how cool. So the wax is nice for, you know, I wouldn't cover swaths of white with wax, but for highlights or, um, you know, some texture, that kind of stuff, maybe spots on a bird. Uh, this technique is really nice. You can paint freely and the wax will resist any paint that you have on top of it. Um, so then let me show you, uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Actually, let's do this one in pink. I have a different pink over here. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the, with the straw. So I'm going to come over here and make a lot of paint. This does not have to be so strong. And so let's just kind of drop, I'm just squeezing my brush to get a lot of paint down on this paper right now. Squeezing it right out. And then check this out. I can come with my straw. And kind of make some marks like that. That can be fun for trees, um, maybe birds, maybe if you're trying to add some dynamism, uh, you might see now in some pictures maybe if that's been accomplished. Now to prevent this from taking forever to dry, I'm just gonna lift that up. Okay, then the next thing we'll try is the saran wrap. Now for the saran wrap, you do want darker paint, so let me take some of this purple and I'm gonna make it pretty rich. And actually, let's drop, just for kicks, drop a little teal in here. See how the teal is pushing the purple away? That's kind of funny. Let me add some, add some more water. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just kind of playing around. Now that's a little too much water. See how it's like pooling and stuff? So let me go ahead and pick that up and put some more paint down. Get back to this rich purple paint. 
Now for the saran wrap method, what you want to do is actually an old piece of saran wrap works really well and you can see this has paint on it because I kind of keep the same piece and keep doing it over and over. But it's because it gets all these nice little textures on it so it's not perfectly sheen. But I can even kind of scrunch it and then take this and just kind of lay it down on this. This is how I did the greens of the carrot. And now this needs to dry, so I'm just gonna kinda let that go as we continue on. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is, let's do the salt. The salt also works better with uh, darker paint. So let me, I'll do indigo again. Maybe I'll put a little Prussian blue in there just to have a little variety on this little test sheet. You know, and this is something that's just really fun to do in your sketchbook. You know, this is the point of sketchbooks is to just explore and play. Now you can see how shiny that is. I need to let it, um, I need to let it seep in a little bit and I'm going to pick up some of the extra paint on the edges. But now it's kind of seeping in. I can see the tooth of the paper a little bit more. Uh, but let me give it just another minute and I'll do another um, another little swatch over here for something else as we wait for that to soak in. I'm just doing a little pink blob. My pinks are very uh, hard. They're kind of earth tones. Uh, and the, uh, the materials used to make them are a little, are a little drying out. All right, so now what I do for the salt is I'm going to take just a tiny bit of salt. This is kosher salt. I also have um, silk salt. I have other different different salts will do different things but you basically just want to kind of light well you can't see that at all but i'm just really just kind of lightly applying you know a sprinkle over the paint and you'll see what happens when it dries that's another thing that we have to let it completely dry and then we can even come down here and see how is this going? Maybe I want a little more. Let's move that a little bit more. Okay. Okay, now this one I also want it to soak in a little bit. And you can see my page is buckling. Let's get some clips. I was giving out clips in class, but if you didn't get any, uh, let me know because I have extras. Just gonna, this isn't gonna do much, but it can kind of help a little bit. You know, if, you're, if your pages are buckling and you don't like that, um, after it dries, you can actually flatten your book and stack a bunch of books on top of it and let it sit like that and it will kind of flatten out again. I mean, this paper that we use, it just kind of does that a little bit anyway, but that's something I do sometimes with my paintings. Now you can already see what's happening with this salt is it's kind of like pushing and making, you know, this is a great effect when there's like snow or um, texture on a bird, you know, that kind of thing. That can be really fun. Um, okay, on this one, now what I wanted to show you with this technique, and again, I need to let it soak in a little bit more, but what I wanted to show you is with alcohol, but we don't have any alcohol in our house right now. And by alcohol, I mean rubbing alcohol, not the other kind of alcohol, which we definitely do have in our house. <laughs> Actually, maybe vodka would work. I don't know. You know, urban sketchers, um, urban sketchers who live in cold places, they actually paint in the wintertime with alcohol because it doesn't freeze. And so I kind of feel like, wow, if it's so cold that my, the water is going to freeze, maybe I'll just skip it uh, and paint inside. But, you know, if you really become a hardcore urban sketcher, maybe I will someday too. Okay, right now I'm just cutting a little square. I'm just cutting a little square of this uh, material so that I can put this on top of that. 
and then we'll let that dry and see what that does. Okay. Um, another thing I forgot to tell you is that it would be good to use next time you swap out your toothbrush, um, keep the old one and use it. I'm just gonna, I just keep this one in my kit. I kind of want a softer one, so next time I might swap this one out. But check this out. I can, I can make some nice splatters with a toothbrush, which can get me, you know, I can also make some nice splatters with a brush by going like this, just tapping it on my hand. Um, and if sometimes if you do that, you might want to protect something on your painting so that you don't get them everywhere. You know, you can kind of, you can even put like a piece of paper over it and then splatter so you protect this part. Um, obviously for the sketchbook, I don't need to worry about that. But sometimes I want smaller splatters and so the toothbrush. Sorry. The toothbrush will kind of achieve smaller splatters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, let me do another, let's see, what color should we, what color do we feel like looking at now? How about this one? This is a nice one. This is Thalo Turquoise, I believe. Might be Ultramarine Turquoise, I can't remember. I went through so many turquoises trying to find the one that I like, turquoises and teals. And then, it was cobalt teal that I fell in love with. Now this looks like it could use a little salt. It's a bigger piece of salt, so that'll be kind of interesting. But I also want to show you, even though I don't have rubbing alcohol, I can also take a Q-tip dipped in water. Again, this spot here is not going to work because it's too wet. So let me pick up some of that paint there. Let the rest of it kind of flow in and with rubbing alcohol, it works a little better. Now I'm kind of pushing and rubbing, um, rubbing the paint away. But this can be nice if you're like doing a Christmas tree and you want to leave room for the ornaments, you can actually kind of like rub your paint away. This is how I made a Christmas card one year. You can rub the paint away and get back to a space where you can put, you know, like an ornament or something. Okay, what else did I want to show you? I think that was about it. Uh, let's see, we have bubble wrap. We have the straw toothbrush, salt, Q-tips, water, don't have alcohol, showed you the candle. Um, okay, so let's see what's happening now with my salt. Making lovely little effects in here. Again, great for under sea scenes or snowy scenes. Um, this, you can see how the paint is kind of um, clumping together and leaving other spots. I can't take that off yet because it's not dry. And then this is going to be really cool. Um, so I think what I might do, well, I can't mute you is the problem. Hmm. I want this to dry so that I can show you what's happening here. But I think maybe I'm going to let you go and just pull this off and show you in the end when it dries. Now, if you do have some rubbing alcohol, try that with a Q-tip because the water kind of just ran, whereas I feel like when I, and maybe it's because of the paper, because you know, this is just the sketchbook paper and it's not as good as watercolor paper, not as thick as watercolor paper. Um, but I feel like when I've done it with rubbing alcohol, it left nice little white dots. So, um, but one other thing I'll show you is, I did this the other day. I did a background with super, it's called Super Granulating Paint, it's from Schminka. 
And I just love that as a background. I don't have to do anything to make that happen. The paint just does that on its own. And then I did the gold and the, the white on top of it. Um, the gold, I have this pan of, um, it's, it's like Sumi gold ink. Um, I actually don't need to keep it in that, but I always do for some reason, but this gold paint is really fun. I have lots of different gold things, gold paints. If you have the, uh, Kuretake paint set that I recommend, those have gold in them, the bigger one. This is gold, um, this is gold ink. And then I have this gold paint and actually how I did these circles you know I just did a, a I wet this paper and then I did paint on it just obviously different blobs I tried to leave some white I didn't want it all covered uh, so I did try to leave some whites um, or some spots where there wasn't any paint and even if you don't have super granulating paint this would look super cool now the paint that I mixed was thicker obviously because I was already watering it down with the water that was on the page and then I took this jar and just um, mixed up a big pile of gold paint and then just put this in here and then basically used it as a stamp on here. And then I also took a smaller one. I saved this from vanilla beans from Costco. And then I used this one to make the smaller circles. Um, and then just used my brush to make these dots and then the white stuff I just did with my brush. Because uh, I did the gold and then I felt like it needed something more, but I didn't want to put black ink on it. Now, the only reason I'm showing this to you is I'm actually going to use these as um, tags for presents. Um, you know, I can just like cut out a little circle and then write on, you know, I have a punch thing. I can tie it with a ribbon and then write on the back. But I, I, I do this sometimes that I just, you know, when I'm taking someone cookies or I just took my neighbor some soup or if I, for my Christmas presents, you know, I just have a little... Um, and it doesn't really matter how you cut it. You can cut it in squares, you can cut it in circles, you can cut through the circle. It doesn't really matter. It just looks cool as a little tag on a, on a gift. So, and that was just a fun way to kind of like do a warm up and, and just have fun with, have fun with my paints um, while I was goofing around with some other stuff. So let me see. So I can see this is still, well, it's not quite right, but I'm still going to pick it up because I want to show you. And I think it's dry enough that it will work. But basically, you know, that's the effect that I got with this bubble wrap. I saw a, um, a illustrator that I really like, Kendry, Ken, Ken, McKendry, Laura McKendry, I think is her name. And she has lessons on Domestica, which um, some of the warm up exercises she does, I have done with classes before. But she is just an incredible illustrator. And when I say illustrator, what an illustrator is is somebody, you know, like when you buy, uh, when you buy wrapping paper or a napkin or stationery, the people who did those designs, uh, those are illustrators. And I would just caution you to be careful taking classes from an illustrator, like for drawing, because they draw all day long every day for their job and they eat you just can't really achieve the results especially in the drawing realm that they do or sometimes even using their other materials like Onmar Wynn is an illustrator I love I'm about to sign up for her Patreon thing just so I can get her lessons and stuff but the way that she uses a dip pen she's been she's been doing it for 20 years you know and it's just very hard for me to achieve uh here's a dip pen this is what i use these inks for um this is not my favorite dip pen i don't know where the other one is right now but um anyway she the way she uses oh here's my favorite one right in front of me um the way she uses a dip pen it's just masterful you know but she's been doing it a really long time so i can't i can't expect to you know be able to achieve her results so, um, but the dip pen is also really fun. What artists like about dip pens is they will do, they're kind of hard because you have to pull them towards you. But again, she's just so good at moving it around. This is kind of ridiculous. That's too big of a blob. Um, but what, what artists like about dip pens is they, let me just put some paint on this one. You can also use paint on your dip pen. Um, they make different, they make a variety of lime. So instead of just using one pen 
and having one line, I can have different lines, depending on how hard I push. And so you can kind of have, I don't even know if you can see any of this. You know, I'm kind of killing time waiting for this plastic to dry because I really want to show that to you. <laughs> so bear with me, please. Um, but let's see if I can also show you a little bit about the dip pen. And you can see how I'm getting this ribbon effect by how hard I'm pushing. But anyway, Onmar Wynn is just a master at the dip pen, and I have never been able to achieve that. Um, but, you know, she's been doing it for 20 years, so that's why. So, um, anyway, she, getting back to Laura McKendry, I saw her do this technique when she was doing an illustration of a pomegranate, which I just thought, oh, what a cool way, you know, because what we're trying to do as artists is we're looking at something, an object or a picture or a scene or the weather or textures, and we're wondering, how do I render that on paper uh, with my medium that I'm exploring right now? You know, you might explore other mediums later, but for now we're doing watercolor. So how do I, so it, to me, it's just a really interesting concept that, oh, I have a pomegranate and inside it's all these seeds and it's, so why don't I use, you know, this bubble wrap and get the effect of that? And then of course she had drawn the pomegranate and it looked perfect and it was wonderful. Um, and she's just super cool. Okay, so this is still totally wet. I can see it shining underneath there, but I'm just gonna lift it up just so you can kind of see what happens if you lift it too soon. Um, I definitely have some paint push it away, but this wet paint is just gonna keep pushing around. So what I can do though, is I can just crinkle it again but you, but you do see, you know, it's no longer just a circle of, of purple. It's, you know, we're getting things pushed around and it looks pretty cool. And again, that's how I did the, the carrot tops that some of you asked me about in class. So I'm just gonna push, put that back down and let it fully dry this time. Um, but anyway, those are, those are some of the ways I've learned to make effects. Um, you know, frankly, you can explore with anything. Sometimes I like to make lines with a stick. In fact, right here on my table, I have these poppy seed pods. And I was kind of wondering like, hey, could I, could I make the pod do something? Or what would it look like to print with this pod? You know, and frankly, it didn't really work. But I think that's the kind of thing we can do in our sketchbooks, like just kind of play around with different things, even dried things that you see in your yard. You know, what What? What? what can I make that do? Um, so uh, one thing that works really well if you have clematis in your yard or on a walk or something, in the springtime when the flowers leave, the inside of the flower kind of closes and it has this really feathery, um, seed pod. Well, it's not a seed pod yet, but as it's going to seed, it has this feathery curled thing that's really cool and makes the coolest like stamp. So I, I just encourage you to explore. These are different things that I've learned from different people. Uh, or eh, I don't think I made any of these up myself, but you know, I encourage you to maybe you'll find something that works really well for texturing. Um, and again, even just doing it on something like this, like a piece of paper in your sketchbook and cut them out and use them as, you know, I could cut out and make a card. I can, I'm gonna use these as gift tags. Uh, you know, all of those things, it's just, I think what we forget as students, especially when we're first learning, is the joy that people get just from, just from seeing something so unique. You know, like if I cut out this circle and I make that a gift tag, it just looks unique. That's nothing that anyone has seen before because it came from my hand. It's impossible for them to have seen it. So, you know, don't, don't, um, or I shouldn't say it that way. Uh, I will encourage you to see how your creativity and your explorations delight people and let them be delighted um, and let yourself be delighted by what you're creating and sharing, even if it's just abstract and whatever. So anyway, those are the things that I thought you could play around with while we're gone, uh, while I'm gone. And I look forward to seeing you for our last class and cookie exchange on December 13th. Thanks. Oops. <laughs>